Psalms 103, 8 through 12. Boy, these are scriptures that fascinate me. Who do you worship? A God or the God? Do you worship the God who died for you? Who shed his blood for you? Who offered you a free gift? How many would ever turn down a free gift? Amen? God loved you. How many of you believe that? Say amen. Amen. I want to talk about an awesome, that's what I've entitled this, an awesome God, when we think of God, do we think of some powerful individual God up there just staying in the heavens and looking down and ready to judge us at the moment, twinkling of an eye? Or do we think of our God, the one who died on the cross for our sins, who didn't have to, but he loved you enough to come and die for you? The sacrifice for you, that's the God I want to talk about today. Let's read Psalms 103, verses 8 through 12. 8 through 12, and listen carefully to the God who is an awesome God, not just a God, but the Jesus, the God who died for you, who lives for you, and one day is coming back for you. The Word of God says this, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not, and this is the verse that gets me, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Lord, be with the service today. We have a merciful God. This is a basic description of God in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Think about this. If God dealt with us according to our sins, what we really deserve, no one could stand before him. We wouldn't stand the chance. There is no way to compare the divine with the mortal. The mercy of God is greater than the heavens. He removes our sins completely. But let's find out a little bit more about the God you worship. To God, I hope that's why you're here today. To acknowledge, I knew all about God Before I got saved at the age of 24, I went to a religious school, had all the religious background, had a lot of head knowledge, until one day I realized I was lost. I realized that God was going to judge me, if you remember that verse, as he will not always strive with us, verse 9, nor will he keep his anger forever. God will judge. But why? Because those that reject the free gift of salvation is why. But he is an awesome God. He loved you. He died for you. He lives for you. And now he wants to deliver you finally It's called the word glorification. You'll find this in Romans 8.30. Unto heaven one day. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to going to heaven. I'm looking forward to going to the new earth. The new heavens. Not flying around the clouds somewhere. Or anything like that. I'm looking forward to going to be with Jesus Christ one day. I want to see Jesus as he really is. Amen? How many of you are looking forward to that? We all have in our minds what God looks like. All kinds of pictures have been made of Him and all that. What does God really look like? Well, we're going to find out one day. Kind of scary though. We're going to look at God, how He really is. But how awesome is He? 
You're saved today. I hope most of you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But what got you there? How did you get saved? What motivated you to get saved? What's the reason for getting saved? A lot of questions go through our mind, and many Christians ponder this. They get saved, and then later on, they really have no conception of what that really means. So let's go through these as we looked at these verses, and we see what kind of God you worship. The God that loves you. The God that gave the sacrifice. Let's look at these and kind of review well, what the Bible says about your God, my God, the only God, the one who became flesh and died one day just for you and for me. Number one, our Lord prefers mercy over anger. Look at verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. The word of God is clear. He doesn't want to judge anybody. He wants to save all. In fact, in Ezekiel 18, verses 23 and 32, he says he has no pleasure in the unrighteous dying. He wants to save everybody. Those that are willing. Those that are willing to do it God's way and not their way. God can save you today. Imagine that. When I was raised in my religion, nobody ever told me I could be saved in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. In 10 minutes I could be saved. 15 minutes maybe Max, preacher came to me and says, how would you like to be saved right now? How many of you are saying, gee, I hope I go to heaven? How would you like to know that you're going to heaven? Without a shadow of a doubt. I hear many a Christian say, well, when I get to heaven, I guess I'll find out if I'm saved or not. Kind of risky, isn't it? <laughs> Number one, if you take that attitude, you're never going to get to heaven to begin with. Many Christians are cautious. You know, someone comes to me and says, are you one of those Christians? Are you saved? I say, yes, I am. I'm going to heaven. They say, well, that's pretty arrogant, isn't it? I said, no, because it's not based on my works, which is based on filthy rags, according to Isaiah 64, 6. It's based on God's righteousness. Amen. Amen. God did it all. His salvation is complete. The Bible says this in Psalms, your next reference verse, Psalms 86, 5. For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive, and abundant mercy to all those who call upon you. Notice, to all those who call upon you. You have to call upon God. You have to one day in your life say, God, I'm lost. Please save me. It's that simple. God, I'm lost. You can't be saved till you know that you're lost. Did you know that? And that's what the Word of God says. He's ready to forgive. Now, someone says, well, I don't know. My sins are pretty bad. There is not one sin in the Word of God that God is not willing to forgive. Amen? Aren't you glad of that? I look back in my past, and it was pretty bleak. But you know what? Jesus will forgive all your sins. I don't care how many, I don't care how bad, the Word of God says God will forgive all your sins. Aren't you glad of that? Amen? Amen. I thank God for that. Psalms 145, verse 8, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and great in mercy. He's great. He wants to forgive. He's willing to forgive. He will forgive. All you got to do is call upon Him. Amen? All you got to do is call in Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of His great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Now I want you to notice in that part of that verse 5, we were dead in trespasses. We were spiritually dead. God's the one who made us alive again. Amen? 
I don't care how much religion you got, it's not enough. I don't care if you're a Catholic. I don't care if you're Presbyterian. I don't care if you're Lutheran. I don't care if you're Pentecostal. I don't care what you are. Neither does God. He could care less what denomination you are. He cares what you do with Jesus Christ. Matthew 16, 16. Jesus said, what do you ask Peter? What do you think of the Christ? Christ literally means in the Greek the anointing or the anointed one. What do you think of Jesus? And what have you done with Jesus once you say you believe in him? Amen? At one time, you had to make that decision. You had a, two choices. You could either accept what he did on the cross, or you can reject what he did on the cross. If you accept what he did on the cross, you're saved. If you say, I don't want none of that Christianity stuff, I don't want none of that Bible-thumping stuff, you can do that too. But then the wrath of God will come upon you. Not because of any specific sin, because of a continual rejection of Jesus Christ. What an awesome God. Many people have said, what about adultery? What about murder? What about, and they go down a list of sins. No, God will forgive any sin. All you got to do is confess it. Amen? Amen? You're saved today because we have an awesome God, number two, our Lord will not keep his anger forever. Now there's a warning, verse 9, read it again. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. There will be a day of judgment. Many of your modern preachers and theologians deny this. Oh no, he's a loving God. Nobody, he won't cast anybody in the hell. Everything's fine. Just sin all you want. Don't worry about it. You don't have to repent. You don't have to turn to God. You don't have to do anything wrong. There is a time in Hebrews 9, 27, the word of God said, is it appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. Yes, there is. Judgment is coming. Aren't you glad you're not going to be part of it? Aren't you glad you're not going to be judged because you've already been forgiven? Let me say that again. You're not going to be judged if you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because you're already forgiven. Not yet to be forgiven. It's already. Read John 3.18. He says you are already forgiven. But you're also condemned already if you reject Christ. It's easy to reject Christ, but the consequences are great. Because you're saying to God the Father, I'm sorry, your son's blood wasn't good enough. Yes, God's judgment will come. Aren't you glad you're saved? Amen. Amen. You're saved. You're not going to face judgment. You're not going to face hell. You're not going to face damnation. You're not going to face it because all your sins are forgiven you. In Genesis 6, 3, your next reference verse, And the Lord said, My spirit will not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. He was saying right then, 120 years later, he was talking about Noah and the flood. He was warning about coming judgment. In Micah seven eighteen, Who is a God like you? pardoning iniquity, and passing over the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in mercy. He delights in mercy. He doesn't want to judge, but he has to judge. A righteous judge has to judge sin. How would you like it if you had a judge and all the murders and and pedophilers and all the rest came on me and just said, don't worry about it, none of you are judged. That's not a righteous judge. A God has to judge sin. But he's ready to forgive you. Amen. How simple can that be? And yet the world turns it down flat. How many of you are glad you're saved? Amen. How many of you show it in your daily life? You have two types of Christians. You have this type of Christian. Hallelujah, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven one day. Then you got this kind of Christian. I always love this group. Hallelujah, one day I'm saved. Oh man, that's a testimony. I'd say, are you going to heaven? Yes, yeah, I'm going one day. God, I can't wait to meet him. I'm looking forward and I'm excited knowing 
that I'm going to be with Jesus one day. How about you? How many of you, when you speak the name of Jesus, do it with a smile on your face or a persimmon in your mouth? Amen. You'd be amazed how many Christians I sit here and scratch my head. I've been saved 50 years. Can't you tell? I go, yep. <laughs> Can you imagine me around sourpuss Christians? You know what a sourpuss? Push Christian is, they always negative. They're always excited. They've lost the joy of their salvation. They haven't lost their salvation. They forgot what it was all about. Amen? You know, and then you, you talk about Christianity. It's like, it's like they're getting a root canal. I love Jesus. I love him every day. And the sacrifice which he made. 2 Peter 3, 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish. But that notice, all, not some, all should come in unto repentance. Amen? Anybody can be saved. All they got to do is ask. Some have said, Oh, my sin's too terrible. Yeah, but God's forgiveness is even stronger than that. Aren't you glad? I praise God. I got saved when I was 24. Now I'm 34, 44, Eight. who said I'm 84? Yeah, who do I think? Thank you, Janet, for reminding me. You act like my birth certificate is made out of parchment paper or something. Let me tell you something. Our Lord, thank God, will not give us what we deserve. Look at verse 10. Look at verse 10. What do we all deserve? We deserve God didn't have to save anybody. Because we were all sinners. Think about that. He didn't have to save look. Go back to verse 10. Listen. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Aren't you glad of that? Nor has he punished us according to our iniquities. Aren't you glad of that? The Bible says... God says, I don't care what you've done. I forgive you. But you got to ask. You got to ask. You can't just believe intellectually. Many people think they're saved and they're not. Many people have never walked forward and says, I want to ask Jesus Christ into my heart. I want to ask him right now. That's why I have the theme of invitation. Right now, I want to know I'm saved. Just to intellectually believe it is not enough. You got to ask him. You got to accept it. If you don't ask, you won't receive. Amen? How many of you have been saved over a hundred years? Okay. I was waiting for somebody to raise their hand there. Especially the one that said I was 85. How many have been saved 60 years? Bob, you've been saved 60 years? Okay, 60 years? 70 years? Oh, you're a spring chicken. All right. How many have been saved 30 years? I've been saved 40. So how many? What, I mean, here we go with a bunch of cripples. What's this? What else? How many have been saved 20 years? All right, 20 years. Aren't you glad you're saved, brother? Amen. Well, isn't that great? If we would just remember that glorious day that Jesus plucked us out and saved us. Amen. Ain't it great? How many of you are looking forward to going to heaven, or how many of you are just going to heaven? <laughs> Don't you love the ones, I'm just going to heaven. God, they're looking forward to it. Can you imagine that? I'm looking forward. Amen. I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus as he really is. What does the Bible say? Psalms 130, verse 3, If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? Nobody could. Nobody could stand again. See, here's what we do, brothers and sisters. This is great. People say, well, how holy are you going to be? And we compare it to each other. Well, you blow it right there. We have to compare our holiness with God's holiness. 1 Peter 1.16 says, be you holy for I am holy. We can't measure up to God's holiness. That's why he saved us to begin with. Amen? We stop comparing ourselves to other Christians. We have to compare to other to a, I'm sorry, to a holy God, and all of us fail. And that's why Jesus sent his son to die on the cross for our sins, because we didn't measure up. 
Amen. Stop looking at our own righteousness and look at God's holiness. That's how we got saved. Psalms 143, verse 2. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for in your sight no one living is righteous. It says it right there. No one living is righteous. When you get to heaven, God's not going to see your righteousness, my righteousness. He's going to see Jesus' righteousness. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> you know, many of us have this thought, when we get to heaven, God's going to have all the list of sins. And he's going to name them. And then the first thing we're going to do, hope nobody's here. No, all your sins are washed away at the cross at Calvary. They're gone. He doesn't even remember them anymore. Oh, what an awesome God. This is God we're talking about. This is God who could throw us all into hell. This is God who could judge us all. But this is God who can forgive us all. All we got to remember, it's all about Jesus Christ. Romans 5.8 But God commended His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, please get that, for us. That means it's called the substitutionary death of Jesus. That means he took our place. He took our judgment. He took our sin on the cross instead of us taking our own. Next, our Lord's mercy is boundless. Verse 11. For as the heavens are higher above the earth, so great is His mercy toward those who fear Him. His mercy is boundless. It will, he will always save. The Word of God says in Psalms 86, 5, For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant mercy to all those who call upon you. He's ready to forgive. He's anxious to forgive. Praise God for that. In Psalms 118.1, one, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures. Please notice that word, forever. He didn't forgive you for just a year. Remember, in the Old Testament, they used to go to the high priest and he'd have to make animal sacrifices year by year. It was called the atonement. Atonement literally means in Hebrew to cover. But now they're washed away. Revelations 1.5, Ephesians 1.7, Colossians 1.14. I could go on and on. They're washed away. They're not just covered. They're gone. They're forgiven. They're forgotten. Can you imagine you standing, kneeling before the throne, and God doesn't even remember the sins that you committed? Wow. Now what do we do? Someone that makes us mad, we offend somebody. I forgive you, but I remember. At Jim Ferguson, I forgive you, Jim. I know that time you offended me, but I'm going to get you. I forgive you. That, is that forgiveness? That's like saying, Jim, I forgive you for offending me. But boy, when your back is turned. <laughs> The night's going in. I mean, that's how we think, isn't it, uh, Christians? We want to get back. We say we forgive. We don't even know the word of forgiveness. Amen. And Jim's saying, yeah, I can tell you really forgive me. Amen. He's probably taking notes now, all the sins he did against me. Okay, I'm going to get him. God doesn't do it that way. He forgives. He forgets. It's gone. It's finished. That's why Jesus in John 19.30 said it is finished. The cross did it all. Amen. Ephesians 1.7 In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace, not our works. Works comes afterwards. So many people say, I'm saved by grace plus works. No, that's a contradiction. Grace literally means unmerited favor. You can't add the two. Romans 11:6 6 says, forget it, the two, you can't, it contradicts. You're saved by faith, you prove your faith by good works. Amen? It's your faith that saves you. It's His grace that saves you. It's not your 
works that saves you. Amen? Praise God for that. What an awesome God we have. No sin is too great for the Lord. Verse 12. You've heard me quote this one over and over. So far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Wow. Think about that. All your sins that you've ever committed since you've been on this earth are forgiven. They're forgotten. Wow, that's pretty weird, isn't it? See, I never thought of Christianity. I thought of religion. Religion is man reaching up to God. Christianity is God reaching down to man. What I could not do, Jesus did for me. Little old me, little old you. I shouldn't say little. Nah, I won't say nothing about Jim's shoes. How many of you are glad you're saved? How many of you know the depth and what was behind your salvation? See, that's the question I ask you today. People say flippantly, oh, I'm saved, I'm saved. Imagine what it took. God to save you. What did it take God to save you? He sacrificed his only son to save you. Amen? Amen. Jesus had to become man. Jesus had to become flesh. Jesus had to suffer. Jesus had to die. Jesus had to resurrect for you to be saved. He did it all. He had it planned out before the foundation of the world, 2 Timothy 1.12, uh, 2 Timothy uh, 1, 1.9, I'm sorry. Think about it. Even before the foundation of the world, God had it planned out. Amen? Even before you were born, God's plan was in action. Amen? All the way from Genesis 3.21, all the way to Revelations Chapter 22, amen. How many of you are glad you have that kind of Savior? Religion cannot save, Christ can. Amen? amen? Who did Jesus fight against the most? The religious crowd, the Pharisees, the scribes, the hypocrites. Read Matthew 23 sometime. He has some sweet, lovable words about the religious crowd. Hypocrites, snakes, vipers. Nice compliments. I bet he wasn't invited to the annual barbecue. Jesus Christ was so tired of the phony religion. Jesus Christ wants the real thing. Amen? Isaiah 29, verse 13. They worship with their lips, but in their lives they deny me. God is so sick and tired of religion. He wants the real thing. Thing. He wants the real you. He wants sacrifice. He wants love. He wants commitment. He wants the real, live, breathing Christians. And you know what? The world longs for that. Amen? They're sick and tired of the religious phonies. They're out there by the bushels. Amen? Isaiah 43, 25, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. I will not remember your sins. Won't even remember them. Amen. When Janet gets to heaven, you know, she may have this fear in the back. of Oh, I know the Lord's going to remind me of this sin or that sin. No. He forgets them. He doesn't even remember them. All of us would go, Whew. sure glad of that. I would do double, Whew. Amen? 24 years in the military taught me, people always remember. But God doesn't even remember. What an awesome God. Amen? Amen. If he remembered one sin, think about this. If he remembered one sin, you would not go into heaven. Not one. If he just he, if he said, I forgive them all, but Brother Rick, this one I don't know about. You'd never go to heaven. But God says, all your sins were washed away 
at the cross. All of them. Now you're looking forward to going to heaven? Praise God. Micah 7.19, He will again have compassion on us and will subdue our iniquities. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. Wow. He's going to cast them all, folks. All of them are gone. What kind of God do you worship? Do you worship a God? Or do you worship the God? Do you worship a God just to worship? Or do you worship Jesus who died for you, who suffered for you, who gave it all for you because he loved you? Hallelujah, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Aren't you glad of that? He didn't have to do it. He wanted to do it. He loved you enough to do it. That is what salvation is about. In conclusion, I know in all his dealings with his people, the Lord has shown himself to be merciful and gracious. He guides, he protects, he provides for every step of the way. His people are wayward, complaining, rebellious, disobedient, yet he puts up with a great deal before his anger flares. His mercy is steadfast. His spite in spite of the ingratitude it meets. I have met some Christians that I, I can't even imagine. Even Christians grumble and complain and whine and forget. And let me put emphasis on forget. They forget the very salvation that God has provided them. Never forget what it costs God the Father for you and me to be saved. Amen? I can't save you. Religion can't save you. Jesus can save you. Jesus will save you. But you have to be willing to call upon him. He is an awesome God. Last verses make it clear. Revelations chapter 1, 5 and 6. Listen carefully. Number one, who is God? It's from Jesus Christ. There he is. The faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead. That means he is the firstborn. He is the one that resurrected from the grave and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us, get that, loved us first, washed us from our sins in his own blood. That's what it took, the price. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. How long are you saved? Forever. Amen? Let us never forget that you were born again. If you have asked Jesus Christ personally to come into your life, you're saved. Done deal. It's finished. It's through. If you haven't, if you just have it in your mind, or you're just thinking about it, if you just have intellectual knowledge, you can know that Bible from cover to cover. But that won't save you. Once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's what counts. When you worship God, you're not just worshiping a God. You're worshiping an awesome God. A God that gave it all just for you. Amen? Isn't that great? At the end of each service, I encourage anybody who is not absolutely sure that they're going to heaven. How would you like to make sure without a shadow of a doubt that if you were to pass from this world into the next, would you be with Jesus in heaven? I encourage those who would like to bow their heads right now and ask Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. That's all God asks you to do, to trust him by faith and accept him by his marvelous grace and ask him into your heart, and you can be saved today. In Jesus' name, amen.